what I'm doing here. <laughs> so people might be wondering what the hell is uh, has a drone got to do with uh, food and drink? So for those who don't follow me on Twitter, um, yeah, we make cider. And we make cider from the things here, at least from the fruit produced by them. And use apples from our orchard right here. But we also use uh, pears to make perry. And those pears come from big old trees that are in the surrounding countryside. So one of my stupid hobbies is uh, hunting for <laughs> pear trees. And the drone is pretty good for that, especially uh, in winter. You can see the shape from miles away, uh, if they're buried in hedgerows or something. It's blossoming, you can see them that way because after the plums blossom, here's the next thing to come. So, let's have a quick look. Alright. <laughs> so, this is our orchard. We've been buying pieces of it in different phases over the past few years. Uh, it was planted in 1958. The trees are mostly quite old. A lot of them were uncared for for a long time. We got some of them into shape, but frankly, it's, uh, it's a shitload of work. And uh, I'd rather focus on planting new stuff now and uh, you know this, they produce a lot of fruit. I mean, last year was just absolutely insane. We, we couldn't even use most of it. This part here we're flying over is the, the most uncared for part. When we, when we bought it, it was basically like, a, like walking into Fangorn Forest. <laughs> it was very dark and we removed some trees so there's gaps there to basically get some light in, some air. The trees aren't terribly healthy. So one thing I'm considering is to remove uh, two or three rows and use as an area to plant some new trees. There are spots like this one here that we're just approaching where there were diseased trees. We removed them and then we sowed a uh, like a flowering meadow mix. So in summer this is really nice and uh, lots of blossoms good for the insects and then I'll basically mow it and mulch it uh, in the next couple of weeks so that the uh, the new growth can, can get off to a good start. We're about a kilometer from where we live. Let me just uh, get a bit higher, we can see. That's the village back there. You can see the, the church spire. We live uh, right beside the church. And uh, these are the old field ways that were uh, leading up to the farmland and a main road down here. Well, main, <laughs> it's all relative, I guess. Which is also built in the 50s, around the same time the orchard was planted. Before that, there was no main street there, at least no paved street. And the reason I'm up here right now is one of the projects we started last year, again, related to making perry and pear trees, with which I am obsessed. Um, and one of the things that we want to do is to try and help preserve, um, yeah, basically old and, and rare and culturally significant varieties of pear tree. So after a lot of searching, Late last year, we bought uh, a field up here. And this is part of our, what we call the International Perry Pear Project. And it just so happens that my good friend, Frank Fellman, who's an organic farmer, he agreed to help us with the preparation of the ground. And just half an hour ago, he said, yep, I'm gonna be up there getting some of the ground ready because next month we're gonna sow a uh, flowering meadow here. So it's about half a hectare. There's Frank just leveling it out. The former owner ploughed it late in the year and uh, basically left it then after we took over. So it needs a little bit of just leveling out. Weeds have started growing and we want to basically give the uh, give the, the, the seed mix that we're buying, which is quite expensive. Uh, we want to give that a, a fair start. So he's just basically leveling it out a bit there. It'll need to be a fine tilt. And then next month, we'll have to keep an eye on the forecast. So when is rain coming? Because we don't want to sow and then have it really dry or maybe it rains a little and they start growing and then it dries and then they'll die. <laughs> so we have to be kind of careful when we're, when we're sowing, just like any crop. But he's the farmer. 
uh, I just I just grow fruit. So he's going to prepare that, and uh, when we sow it, then they'll be sown on top of the ground, and then with a a roller kind of bedded in, and then hopefully by the end of the year, well by autumn, hopefully we we'll have a nice flowering meadow, and this will be the basis on which we're going to then plant a traditional uh, peri pear orchard. So it's uh, about just over half a hectare, as I said, and we're going to fit about 50 trees in this plot with a 10 meter spacing between them. And I mentioned before on a, another video on, on Twitter that uh, sometimes I kind of shit myself that what are we doing? <laughs> you know, it's, it's up on a rise here. It's, it's one of the higher points around. And, uh, you know, is it suitable for, for planting pear trees on? But actually, it's really, really good soil. Um, it's, it's kind of clay rich, it holds the moisture. Um, and right beside it is one of the biggest pear trees uh, in the immediate surroundings. It's estimated around 200 years old, I'd say plus or minus 20 years. And it's a Schweitzer of Wasserbirne, casting a huge shadow there. The diameter, or not the diameter, the circumference of the trunk is 3.76 meters. It's, it's massive. So yeah, I think it's an okay spot. And uh, this gives me confidence. This tree gives me confidence that uh, we actually have the right spot. But it's a very much a long-term project. Um, peri pear trees will take up to 15 years before they start producing anything uh, in any quantity. And then only in, well, really small amounts, I guess. Um, so I'm hoping I live long enough to be able to make at least a blend from all the trees that we plant here. And uh, if, I don't know, if I, if I live another 30 years, I'll be 80 or so then, uh, then maybe I can make some single uh, variety perries from some of the, the rarer uh, English and, uh, and German varieties that you don't see around here at all. That's the plan at least. And because, well, last year I grafted about 170 trees, only 50 will fit here. I've got a lot of spare trees. So in the previous test video uh, stream, I mentioned that we were planting you know, trees along streams and stuff like this. So if there's any farmers that uh, you know, I can work with to plant trees like the way they were planted in the past, you know, alongside tracks, um, you know, you know, along the, the edges of, of fields and this type of thing. Places that are kind of marginal land that isn't being used or isn't good for anything else. Peri pear trees were traditionally planted along these areas and it's a really good use as a, as a kind of a side crop. And also to provide some shade. And if we look in the distance here, you know, the sun is kind of blinding us a little bit, but all those trees that you see running along this trackway in the middle of the frame, it's a little bit dark, they are all peri pear trees. So there's a whole row of them along the boundary between our village and the next village. Anyway, that's the plan. And uh, this year will is really the big, the big jump start. And uh, in autumn we'll plant then the 50 trees and put our sponsors' names on them. And I'm hoping for a phase two. <laughs> so greedy. And I'm really hoping we can get our hands on this meadow that we're just approaching here now. It's a kind of a triangular area. Uh, there's actually three strips of land. Um, so somebody's obviously kind of plowed up this little bit. But basically this has been left as meadow, so it's cheaper. I guess it's maybe suitable for crops, and that's why it's been left. Um, but I'm hoping, so I know I know who owns it, and uh, maybe we can get some grant assistance, or if our sponsors are really generous again, maybe we'll be able to purchase this little plot and then maybe we get another you know 70 trees or so uh, planted in there yeah there we go and that's the orchard uh, down there so i'm gonna go up and say hello to frank i don't know if he's noticed me kind of buzzing around him with the drone where am i <laughs> i've lost i've lost an idea where i am i hear him frank must be here somewhere i oh, know he's near the tree Ah, oh, he's over there. <laughs> so I'm going to come up with the dog. Well, let's fly back to where we are. Because if I'm out of breath, I shouldn't be bloody talking while I'm walking. Here we go. Got to find a nice place to land. Thankfully, it's very dry up here again. It was like bloody marsh up here. 
Here's the drone, Anu. And she starts wagging her tail when she hears it approach. <laughs> you gonna go greet it? No, you don't wanna? Yeah, it's a bit loud, isn't it? Hello. <laughs> If there's any requests for places to fly, let me know. What I plan on doing is to uh, take some flybys around uh, pear trees that are in the area, just to show what the variety is like. And the fact that, you know, I mean, outside of Herefordshire or places in France, people don't think about peri pear trees being around the place, but the German countryside is full of them. Uh, it's something I can get into <laughs> again, because I can talk forever on that and the drone battery doesn't really last that long so yeah hopefully this is of interest to some people or both of you <laughs> who are watching and uh yeah we'll do it again sometime there you go anu do you want to say hello to it it's not buzzing anymore talk to you later